Are your kids struggling with math, specifically in how to add two different fractions with different denominators? Let's handle it right now because this is a really important concept. If you don't get this, then the rest of fractions is not going to make sense. All right, I'm going to take you down to my desk. Here we go. Okay. So if I said one third plus two thirds, do the bottoms match? Yes, they do. So what that means is I am simply going to bring this over. We don't add the bottoms because that wouldn't make any sense. Here, watch. So for this one, one third, the three, remember, talks about how many divisions you have. The one is how many actually you're talking about. So this is a pizza sliced into three pieces, but you only took one. Your friend took two. Okay, so what does that mean? How many pieces all together? There's one, two, three, or one plus two. So you just add the top. One plus two is three. We just keep in mind you don't add the bo bottom because we don't add the number of divisions. So three out of three means we're talking about an entire pizza here. Okay. So you could also say this is equal to one. All right. So this was a quick review. What if they don't match? I have two thirds minus one quarter. We're going to find something called least common denominator, LCD, least common denominator. And what that means is, is do you see that three? Okay. Tell me, can you help me count by threes? Here, I'll write it in another color. Three, then what? Six, nine, 12, 15, right? And it keeps going on. Okay. How about, can you help me count by fours? Help me count by fours. Four, and then four plus four is eight. Okay, eight plus four is 12, then 16, and it goes on. Do you see any that match? Yeah, which ones match? Okay, the 12. All right, so what does that mean? That means that the 12 is the smallest number. There are more out here, actually three. Eventually you get to a 24, and four also has a 24. But we're looking for the least one. L is for least. L-E-A-S-T, least common denominator. So we're looking for the one that's common to both that is the smallest, so the first one that pops up. So three goes into 12, four goes into 12. That's what we want. Okay, so this, is, this may be the confusing part, or it may actually be the easiest part for you. Watch this. If I know that 12 is the least common denominator, it's the thing that both these numbers go into, what do I have to multiply three by to get to 12? So here, I'll write it here. Two thirds, okay? Three times something gives me 12. What is it? Yeah, it's times four, isn't it? So four. So I can't just multiply the bottom by four. That'll change the problem. I can multiply top and bottom, right? Because four over four, that's the same as saying one. So I'm basically multiplying by a clever form of one, four over four. One times two thirds, nobody cares if we multiply one times anything all day long. We can do that, nobody's gonna raise a fuss. So let's do it. Four times three is 12. What is four times two? Four times two is eight. So we just scaled up the fraction of two thirds to be eight twelfths. So you can see if I divide top and bottom by four, I'm gonna get two thirds. So two thirds is the same as saying eight twelfths. So out of every three cookies, you eat two. If there's 12 cookies, you, that means you ate eight. All right, let's do the same thing for the quarter. Okay, so we'll move this up. So one quarter, what do I have to multiply by to get the bottom equal to 12? Is it four? No, that'd be too big, right? What do I need to multiply by? That's right, three. Now, can I just do the bottom or do I have to do the top too? Yeah, I have to do the top. Okay. In order to multiply this fraction by one and not break any rules, I have to multiply top and bottom by the same, okay? So you tell me, what is three times one? You're like, oh, that is too easy. And three times four is 12. All right, so the original problem was two thirds minus a quarter, okay? So this is going to be eight over 12 minus three over 12. Do you see how the bottoms match now? Oops. Get that up there, okay. Do you see how the bottoms match? All right, so these must match, and if they don't, you have to scale one or both of them up. We scaled both. And then you just do whatever you need to do to the top. This is an eight minus a three. Eight minus three is five, and you carry the divisions. Remember, you don't divide or do anything weird with the bottom, okay? You just keep those in there. 
All right, so we did it. That's the process of doing this. If you're like, wow, that took a lot of energy. Well, the first time you do anything, it takes a little longer, right? Okay, so let's practice so we get really good at this. Okay, so the next problem I have looks like this. I have four over seven minus one fifth. What is the smallest number that, go, that seven and five both go into with no remainders? Okay, in this case, it's seven and times five, right? Because this is five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Okay, so, and seven doesn't end in a five until we get to 35, right? So the smallest denominator here is 35. So what do I have to multiply the bottom by? Okay, so let's work on this one first, okay? So seven times something gave me 35. Do you remember what it was? Seven times, yeah, seven times five. So I'm gonna multiply this one by five over five. Five times seven is 35. Five times four is what goes on top, the 20. Okay, what do I have to multiply the five by, just look over here, to get 35? What do I have to, is it multiplied by five over five? No, it's seven over seven, isn't it? Because I need five times seven is 35. One times seven, this dot is a multiply, one times seven is seven. Do you see how I scaled this one up first and I didn't do anything with the other side yet? and I scaled that one up first. So you're gonna take each one in turn, and now you get to do the fun part. Okay, so write down 35 on the bottom, and 20 minus 17, that is 13. And I can't reduce it anymore, 13 is prime, and 35, it doesn't have 13 as a, as a factor. So there's your final answer. Two thirds plus three quarters. We're gonna add those. Now. The bottoms, they don't match, right? Watch this. What is three times four? 12, okay. So I'm gonna have a 12 plus a 12, good. What is three times three? Three times three is nine. What is four, let me do it in a different color. Four times two, all right, this is an eight. So what did we just do? We scaled up each one. So this is eight over 12. This one is nine over 12. And this is my eight and there's my nine. And then eight plus nine is 17. One fifth minus one twelfth. Let's do a subtraction one. What is five times 12? Five times 12. Now this is, don't worry about least common denominator. Five times 12, what do you think it is? Yeah, did you get 60? Did you get 60? All right, so what you do is you write the bottom down here and then whatever the sign is, okay? And then what you do is you just go, okay. Five times one is a five, okay? And it's gonna be over 60. And a 12 times one is a 12 over, and they have, they're gonna be over the same thing. So this is, tw oh, that's the wrong number, wrong color, 12 over 60 minus five over 60. So it's the same thing we were just doing, but we're just saying, well, 12, I'm gonna multiply it top and bottom. So I have 12 over 60, and the five, I'm gonna multiply it top and bottom. So one times five is five, and five times 12 is 60. And then 12 minus five is seven over 60. Good. All right, so you can do either, either way, they're both, they're, they're exactly the same method, exactly the same. So let's, let's make sure this makes sense. You're gonna do this one and then we're gonna talk about it. Can you do this one for me? Two thirds minus a half. All right, I'll give you about 15, 20 seconds. Go ahead and get a good start on it. Get a good start. Okay. and get a good start. Okay. All right, so what's a number that they both, they both go into? Did you figure that out yet? 
Yeah, so I would say the least common denominator is 6. Okay, so how did 3 go from 3 to 6 using multiplication? What did I have to do to it? What did I have to do to the 3? Yeah, I have to multiply by 2 over 2. Okay, so that's multiplication. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 2 is 4. Good. How about this one? What do I have to do to the 2 to make it turn into a 6 using only multiplication? 2 times yeah, 3, right? So top and bottom get multiplied by 3. Here's your 6. 2 times 3 is 6. 1 times 3 is whoop, 3. So I have 4 minus 3 is 1, and the 6's carry over. My answer, how'd you do? 1 6. Yay! Can I do that? Yes, you can. Because look, 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 1 is 3. Did you see that? It's the same thing. It's just two different ways of thinking about it. So you choose the way that you like best. So what do you think? Is that making sense? My name is Aurora. I have a program for grades 4th through 8th. If you'd like more lessons like this, join me in my math program. It's called Supercharged Math. It's for kids in grades 4th through 8th. And you can find the link right here. I'll see you soon.